So, a little birdie told me, you, yes you, you want to learn how to play Lily at top. And who am I? Well, I'm the Lily lover, and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about playing Lilia in the top lane. Usually you would take Lilia in the jungle, but the jungle's just too scary. Look, look at her. She can barely even clear the camps. Lily the jungle is not viable at all. Just look at her. It's impossible. Look how much easier it is for her. Look at her farm. Look at her go. There we go, Lilia. This is the you truly belong. She's so happy to be here in the top lane. So that proves it. That proves that Lilia jungle is unviable and you should only play her in the top lane. But don't worry, my friends. I'll teach you everything you need to know to play Lilia in the top lane. The reason why you play Lilia top is so you can get an advantage on melee champions and abuse the fact that you outrange them and that you have burn damage, you have healing on your passive, and you just have enough sustain to basically have a farm lane. That is the difference between playing Lilia top and Lilia jungle. You're just trying to get an advantage based on farming and then putting the enemy top laner as behind as you can, uh, you know, poking them when they go for CS, uh, killing them, you have true damage on your Q, bonus damage on your W, it makes the lane hard. For rune page, you're going to be looking to go into precision and to resolve. In precision tree, you're going to take conqueror because conqueror is the only rune here that you can take. It's her best rune as well. Presence of mind because you used up so much mana. Tenacity because, again, you're going to be running into five people on the enemy team trying to get that five man all just running around. Right? The best thing about Lilia is her movement speed and how quick she is. So if the enemy team stuns you, it's kind of game over for your character. That's when tenacity comes and helps you out. And last stand. Lilia is not tanky whatsoever until she starts building items. And then you're going to run into Resolve, take Bone Plating into Overgrowth. Now these runes here, these are interchangeable, but I usually run double AP into Health Scaling. But you can run 1 AP Health Scaling, right? If enemy team has a lot of CC, this is pretty good here. But Overgrowth is not going to kick in until like 20 to 30 minutes into the game. And this health skilling rune as well is uh, not going to kick in until way later into the game, right? Lily is a skill champion, right? Honestly, running just normal health is better more times than not into games that won't last as long. And seeing how games end quicker and quicker nowadays, going uh, health scaling really just depends on enemy team. Speaking of enemy team, if you're fighting into range top, you take second win instead of bone plating. That's the only change you would be taking. But this is pretty much your standard rune page. Um, here we go. This is pretty much your standard root page for any matchup. So, oh, for build order, what do we build? Well, your starting items, you're going to be taking tear into two pots, and let me explain why. Even though Dorn items are considered broken, um, and they're really good starting items, taking tear is needed on Lilia top. You're not building a jungle item, so you don't have the natural mana regeneration to continue laning phase after about 6 Qs. It takes 6 Qs from Lilia to go from from her base mana level 1 to no mana. Taking tier will help you sustain in your mana and it's honestly needed for laning. But if you are plagued and you have to fight a ranged top laner, you're going to have to sacrifice your laning state and go Doran's pot. But here's a rule of thumb. If enemy team picks a ranged top laner, do not play Lilia. Into ranged top, it's hard for Lilia to farm and you won't be able to poke them down at all. It's very hard to get value out of Lilia into ranged. So now let's get into the rest of her items. What do you build on Lilia? Well, I recommend going 3 AP into full tank. So, after we go through the starting items, you're probably running your tier and your two health pots, because again, that is the best start for Lilia. What do you build? First item, your perfect bag from laning, you're looking at haunting guys. Then you're gonna opt the haunting guys into a Leandries. So you're looking like this, right? Leandries, I don't even think I need to explain how good this is on Lilia. You get the two stats that Lilia wants the most. Flat AP with health. For Lilia's best boots, you're going to be building Ionian Boots of Lucidity. This is the only haste Lilia really gets in her build at all whatsoever. Um, and you're not really building it for the haste. You're building it to get the summoner cooldowns for her. So what I mean... Uh, you want flash as often as possible for Lilia. You don't have any gap closers. You needing flash to get to the enemy backline so you can Q ult is going to be really important for your team to win team fights. 
um, the only backline action she really has is just, oh, I have 600 movement speed, but you know how League is. You're playing against five opponents and almost every single character in the game has some form of CC, whether it's a slow uh, point click stun, you know, or a skill shot CC. What I'm trying to say is you can't rely on just dodging everything all the time, right? Having flash up as much as possible for situations where you can't easily access the backline will win you your team fights. For Lilia's second item, we're going to be building Riftmaker. Riftmaker is going to constantly tick off her passive. Oh, wouldn't you know? Another item that ticks off Lilia passive. Wow, I wonder what we're going to be building third. Oh, wouldn't you know? We're going to be building Rylai's. Why? For the exact same reason we built the other two items. Strange, right? Because Rylai's is constantly going to tick with your passive. You're abusing Lilia's kit as best as you can. Buying a cheap item such as Rylai's, which gives you 400 flat HP, the one of the stats Lilia loves the most, it is disgusting. That item, you abuse it. Abuse it before Riot finally realizes that Rylai's is good. Getting 400 flat HP and getting 40 AP, those are the stats you want on Lilia. And all three of these items makes her Exodia. You're going to be taking every single fight. You're going to be healing off Riftmaker. Meandries is going to be bringing away at the enemy's defenses. And Rylice is going to be slowing them. It is <laughs> quite literally, the th these items were just made for her. In some matchups, though, building Rylice second is needed. With Lilia top, when you're finding characters like Riven, Irelia, and Mi Jungle has Spell Veth, they might have Illusion, right? You want to build Rylai second so you can kite them better. Uh, sometimes it isn't all about going all in into damage. You need the Rylai for matchups where they can easily kite you, or they just have enough gap closers and movement speed to stop you from kiting them. Now is where I take Lilia in a different approach. You know, usually here you might build a death cap, you might build a Sonyas, you know, get some more AP, you know? We love damage. The way I play Lady of the Top is I turn her into an off tank. I build her like Mordekaiser. Again, build her exactly like I would a Mordekaiser top. I start building tank items. And I find her to be more effective when she starts building a little bit of tankiness compared to building more damage. Uh, late game, you're going to blow up like a balloon. Having the extra tank stats really saves you. Um, believe it or not, her next best item when building tank, and you're not even going to be surprised, it's going to be Jock Show. If enemy team is mixed damage, building Jock Show is the possible best tank item Lily can get. Because you will insta-proc Jock Show all 5 stacks with one ability. Do you know why? Because Lilia Burn will count you being in combat for four or five seconds. That's right. Another item that abuses Lilia passive, you're building a 300 health item and you're getting 75 armor and you're getting 75 magic resist. Or 65. For other tank items Lilia can build, if enemy team has heavy crit, Randu's Omen is the perfect item for her to build. They have a Yasuo, they have a Samira, they have a Yon, right? All in the same team. Know they get a lot of crit damage. Building Randoon's Omen is going to give you a lot of value. Okay. What if enemy team doesn't have a lot of crit? What am I supposed to build then? Getting Unending Despair is going to be the second best item for Lilia to get if they don't have crit and they're building heavy AD. Bam bam. Okay. What if they're heavy AP? Get a Kinetic Rookern. Right? Rookern is way better than Spear Visage. Spear Visage healing is pretty much a bait. You're not going to be healing enough to warrant getting spear facage over rooker for one main fact right now with this build hitting four people at once i can guarantee you i'm only going to be healing around you know 300 health so i'm going to test that right now this here is one Lilia combo so as you can see it's a zero healing bonus this is with my passive and Riftmaker. It's not even going to heal me 300 health. Right, that's a full Lilia combo. I'm healing off Conqueror, my passive, and Riftmaker. Let's see how much Spirit Passage helped me. Oh my god, it's pathetic. 
that is really pathetic. So let's compare the two items again. Spirit Passage gives me 50 more health and 10 haste. Okay, Rook Earn gives me 400 health, but that's not totally true. I buy this item and tell her it again. I'm getting 703 extra bonus health on Lilia with as a magic shield, right? So that 50 extra health, that kind of doesn't really matter here anymore because I'm getting 703 bonus magic health. All right, well, let's check the other stats. Oh, it gives me more magic resist. Okay, and it gives me more base health regeneration. But what about the haste? Lilia is not an ability haste champion. She doesn't care about haste whatsoever at all. Ionian Boots helps her for early game. That's the only time she'll ever need haste. You're picking up Ionian Boots so you have flash on shorter cooldowns. And for the fact that early game her Q is kind of long. Right now, my Q is 3.8. I sell this, it's going to be like 3.5. 3.5. Yeah, half a second off your Q, and that's the only ability that's really going to benefit the most off having haste. The 10 haste isn't going to do anything. You're not utilizing its passive healing from a Spirit Massage to ever make this a worth buy, ever, right? It is completely garbage. Even if enemy team is heavy AP and you need to go to AP magic resist items and you can't go jock show, again, they're heavy AP, there's no point. Going in Abyssal Mask is way more worth than going spirit massage for the simple fact that it's cheaper they they get a little bit lower magic resist and you gain magic resist the last item it's not bad it's cheap i never ever like building spirit massage on lilia because it is the worst magic resist item getting hollow radiance is even better than it all the magic resist items in the entire shop are better than spirit massage in its current case Oh, but it's, what about healing and shielding? You get it off your teammates as well, right? You know, you have a little Lulu, Soraka. No, it's still, I still wouldn't recommend going Spirit Massage on Lilia when Rooker is just way better of an item in its current state. So honestly, for a final build for Lilia, I opt into 3 AP with two tank items, you know? Usually, this is what my final build looks like more cases than not. I really don't care about armor. Uh, mages are kind of broken right now this season, so we just chill with this. As for summoner spells on Lilia, run flash TP. I've tried ghost TP, I've tried ghost flash, right? The extra movement speed from ghost is really nice, but sacrificing the ability to teleport anywhere on the map does really affect her because you want to play Lilia like a split pusher when you take her top lane. You want to Provide as much pressure onto the side lanes as you can as possible, and having TP to TP to help your team uh, with dragons, team fights, and barons is just way too much value to just run ghosts so you're a little bit faster, right? You're already going to be running at 600 movement speed. Why does 700 make that much of a difference? You know what I'm trying to say? Flash is needed on Lilia so you can flash into the enemy team and then get as much of your passive running around before you can hit ultimate. You're going to need flash in almost a lot of situations to get access into the enemy backline. Okay, so I've taught you what runes to take on Lilia, what items to build on Lilia, what type of items to build when on Lilia, and the summoner spell she should take. The last bit of information that I could possibly hand down to you for right now is the matchup table. Again, I'm the only person I know who plays Lilia in the top lane, and I've never played her in the jungle. This matchup sheet is going to be my personal experience with matchups for Lilia and what I think some of her matchups might go. Again, I've never met another person who plays Lilia in the top lane, so use it as a reference. Some matchups might be harder for you, some matchups might be easier. So, we're going to go over the Lilia matchup chart table together. I'm going to talk about specific champions and specific builds, and how to build when you're finding these champions in the top lane. So, I think the tiers are self explanatory, but I'll explain them a little bit more. You win, you win. <laughs> yeah, good explanation. These are champions who if they, uh, who you just abuse. Lilia loves fighting tanks because they can't really fight her back. Um, you get to poke them down easily, and even though there are some characters here who aren't tanks, uh, you also get to abuse easily as well. Such as Jax jumping on you, you get to outtrade him with your W. I really doing the same and Briar. You just basically have good traits into them. Right? For characters that win late, these are characters you can't kill early game. 
right? It, you're just going to sit there and farm. You both just can't kill each other. For skill 50-50, this is when your knowledge of Lilia and how well you can play Lilia will come into hands. This is also test your knowledge against how to play against these champions in general. It's all about knowledge diff in these matchups here. Hard lane means that you won't be killing them and they can actually fight you back. Uh, yeah, you're not able to abuse the reason why you picked Lilia in the first place. Lilia, so you could have an easy lane and put the enemy tap lane behind with your poke. Never pick lane, also self-explanatory. These are Lilia matchups where it's almost impossible for her to win, even with heavy jungle assistance. Do not pick Lilia into these matchups. Now, let me go over some of them. So even the way you're going to be building is different for what matchup you're into. The Yuin tier, you can build normal Myandries into um, Riftmaker, right? For some of these characters in the win late, you're going to be building, your again, normal Myandries into Riftmaker. All these characters in skill 50-50 hardly never pick, and half of the characters here in win late are going to be building around last second. Building around last second actually allows you to start killing some of these characters, especially in the win late category. Bane is a prime example of this, so is Quinn, Graves, Akshan, and Pantheon. These characters, you can absolutely start dueling now that you have a Rallyes and they're slowed. Same for the area character here in skill 50-50, getting Rallyes makes the matchup way easier. With another pick category, some of these characters play completely identical, so I'm going to be doing them in pairs, right? Udyr and Sack, they have more sustain than you. Right, their poke to them doesn't matter, and they will out damage you in trades. It's completely ridiculous. I hate it so much. You'd be playing the lane perfectly fine. Udyr will Rams dance into you, you know, and then he'll double ultimate, eh, proc and cryo phoenix, eh, and then he'll just born heal up all his health eh, off minions. It's very obnoxious to play into, especially when he just builds a Krunic Rooker first. Eh, again, the same the same exact way for Zach, by the way. Right? He fights you, he picks up his blobs, he heals like hundreds of HP, and then he just builds a Krunic Rooker. You know, you just can't kill him. I mean, he'll just out damage you in trades. For TF and Jace, Twisted Fate and Jace play basically the lane similar for how you're not going to win. They have good self peel. Jace has his knockback, right? TF has his point and click gold card. Um, and they outrange you. Simple to put it. Especially when TF builds a rapid fire first. All items TF build gives him movement speed, so even if you do go a uh, Rift Maker, sorry, not Rift Maker, a Rylize, right, he'll eventually just walk it off and still outspeed you, especially with his point and click stun. It's very, very, very hard to ever get onto TF, and you just end up losing lane. Jace outranges and outpokes you, and if you try to step up to him, he will actually fight you in melee form. He's one of the characters who, you know what I said for Irelia and Jax, how they'll just jump on you and punish them for W? Yeah, he'll just cancel yours, so it's just kind of terrible there. Renekton and Set also play kind of similarly. You walk up to poke Set, uh-oh, you went into his E range. Now he pulls you, stuns you on your own minions, by the way. And he hits you for about 400 HP. He gets in four auto attacks. It's very, very hard. And then when he hits level two, right, he gets his Q. At level three, he gets his W, and you just can't outtrade him. He's too tanky. His ultimate cancels out your ultimate. It's just not a good time whenever you have to fight a set because you can't walk up and poke him. So you can't walk up and farm. And then the same for Renekton. He has. Two free dashes onto your minions, and then with a Fury W, if he gets a Bork, if he gets an Eclipse, he'll easily be doing half your health. He goes PTA, he's going to outtrade the hell out of you, and you can't really fight him back. Right? And Darius, I'm not going to explain Darius. I'll let you find out why Darius is such a bad matchup for uh, Lilia. I, I'm not going to explain it. Do some homework. Fight a Darius. Go ahead. Go fight Darius top lane with Ghost Slash, right? Where he just runs you down and then you just can't touch him because he pulls you, it slows, he W, it slows, and his bleed does 500 damage a proc because somebody thought that was a good idea. He completely invalidates the reason for you going Lilia top to outrange him when his hook is the same range as your autos and your Q. And you know, he also slows you heavily. 
you picked Lilia so you'd have a bunch of movement speed running around, kind and everything. No, you just can't move. But Nasus is a new wind tier because what about his wither? Okay, Nasus also isn't a champion until like 20 minutes. And all you need for Lilia to be good is her early game. But finally, the last thing you need to know about Lilia, you're going to max Q into W into ultimate into E. When you're playing ranged matchups as Lilia, you're going to put three points into your E and then play like normal. And there you go. That's the Lilia Lover's Guide on how to play Lilia top lane. You still having doubts on Lilia top being bad? You know, yeah, it's a cool gimmick and all. Oh yeah? Well, watch this shit. So much cuter than you bitches I'm hitting yawns on you bitches uh, yeah. yeah, I have no clue what I just edited and uh, recorded for you guys um, So, <laughs> besides that edit there, should you be playing Lilia Top? Honestly, it's a fun way and interesting way, direction, to take the champion um, I'm a guy who doesn't enjoy jungling at all, and as a guy who only plays Lily at top, that's the way I accumulate all my mastery points. Um, I do find it really enjoyable, and as a top main, her bully lane potential is ah uh, truly disgusting. It's really good. So yeah, I hope this video at least convinces somebody out there to also try Lily at top once and. To the people on TikTok, <laughs> I told this video would come out on the 20th of February. You didn't see that post. For everybody else, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day.